Ancient Japan, with its rich history and culture, has fascinated us for centuries. Among the most iconic figures from this time are the samurai, an elite warrior class who lived by a strict code of honor and discipline. Today we're going to explore the unique traditions and lifestyle of the samurai, delving into what it meant to be a samurai in ancient Japan. We'll also take a look at the remarkable engineering and architectural innovations of the time, along with other intriguing aspects of ancient Japanese society. So let's step back in time and immerse ourselves in the world of ancient Japan. Welcome to life's biggest questions. Now let's continue. To delve deeper into the world of the samurai, let's first take a look at the broader historical context of ancient Japan. The Heian period, 794-1185 CE, marked a significant turning point for Japan, with the establishment of the imperial capital in Kyoto, then called Heian Kyo, and the flourishing of the arts and literature. It was also during this time that the samurai emerged as a distinct warrior class, protecting the interests of their noble patrons and playing a crucial role in the power struggles that shaped Japan's political landscape. As Japan moved into the Kamakura, 1185 to 1333 CE, and Muromachi, 1336 to 1573 CE periods, the role of the samurai continued to evolve. The establishment of the first shogunate or military government in Kamakura marked the beginning of a new era where the samurai class held significant political power. This shift in power dynamics set the stage for the rise of prominent samurai clans such as the Taira, Minamoto, and later the Ashikaga. The samurai's role in society extended far beyond the battlefield. As members of the ruling class, they were expected to be well-versed in poetry, literature, and the arts. The tale of Genji, often regarded as the world's first novel, was written during the Heian period by Lady Murasaki Shikibu and was widely read and appreciated among the samurai class. This emphasis on cultural refinement set the samurai apart from other warrior classes throughout history illustrating the unique blend of martial prowess and intellectual pursuits that characterized the samurai way of life. In addition to their martial and cultural roles, the samurai also played an essential part in shaping Japan's legal system. The development of the Gosebai Shikimoku or the formulary of adjudications in 1232 during the Kamakura period was a crucial step in codifying the laws and practices that governed samurai society. This legal code established a set of principles that guided the samurai's conduct both on and off the battlefield, and further reinforced the importance of Bujido in the daily lives of these elite warriors. The world of the samurai was steeped in tradition, with various unique customs and rituals shaping their daily lives. These practices were not only integral to the samurai's personal growth and development, but also served to strengthen the bonds within their communities and reinforce their commitment to the principles of Bushido. One such tradition was the practice of meditation, which allowed samurai to cultivate mental clarity, self-discipline and emotional resilience. By developing their ability to remain focused and present in the face of adversity, samurai warriors were able to maintain a heightened sense of awareness on the battlefield and make strategic decisions under pressure. In addition to meditation, the samurai also engaged in rigorous physical training, known as keiko, which included martial arts disciplines such as kendo, kudo, and jujitsu. These practices not only honed the samurai's physical prowess, but also reinforced the spiritual and mental aspects of their training. The concept of mushin, or no mind, was particularly important in these disciplines, as it encouraged the samurai to act instinctively and without hesitation in the heat of battle. Another fascinating samurai tradition was the practice of ikebana, or Japanese flower arrangement. This art form emphasized the harmonious arrangement of flowers, branches, and other natural elements, fostering a deep appreciation for nature and its inherent beauty. For the samurai, the practice of ikebana was more than just a creative outlet. It was a means of cultivating a sense of balance and tranquility, which was essential to their success as warriors. Samurai also had a unique relationship with poetry, particularly the traditional Japanese form known as tanka. Composed of five lines with a syllable pattern of 57577, tanka poetry was a means for samurai to express their thoughts and emotions in a concise and elegant manner. In many cases, samurai would engage in friendly poetry competitions, known as yuta awais, 
as a way of honing their literary skills and fostering camaraderie among their peers. The practice of yabusame or horseback archery was another unique samurai tradition that required great skill, concentration and discipline. The samurai would train rigorously to develop the ability to shoot accurately while riding at high speeds, demonstrating their mastery of both horsemanship and archery. Yabusame events were often held as ceremonial demonstrations, with samurai showcasing their prowess in front of their lords and fellow warriors. The samurai were renowned for their mastery of various weapons, each with its unique characteristics and uses on the battlefield. While the katana is perhaps the most iconic of these weapons, samurai were also skilled in the use of a range of other arms, which played an essential role in their martial prowess. One such weapon was the yumi, a traditional Japanese longbow which was a key component of the samurai's arsenal. The yumi was asymmetric, with a lower grip to accommodate shooting from horseback. Archery was considered a highly honorable skill, and samurai trained rigorously to become expert marksmen, able to hit targets with incredible accuracy even at long distances. Another notable weapon was the naginata, a polearm with a curved blade at the end. The naginata was particularly effective in close combat situations, allowing the wielder to strike with considerable force while maintaining a safe distance from their opponent. This weapon was also popular among samurai women, who were trained in its use for self-defense and to protect their homes in times of conflict. Samurai also employed the use of the Tanto, a short dagger used primarily for close quarters combat and in ritual suicide or seppuku. The Tanto was often carried alongside the katana, providing the samurai with a versatile secondary weapon when needed. The armor worn by samurai was meticulously crafted to provide maximum protection without sacrificing mobility. The design of this armor evolved over time, reflecting changes in warfare and the specific needs of the samurai class. Early samurai armor known as o -O Yoroi was characterized by large boxy cuirasses and helmets adorned with intricate ornamentation. However, as warfare shifted toward more infantry-based combat, the armor design changed to become more flexible and lightweight, resulting in the development of the Domaru and later the Tose Gusoko. Samurai armor was typically made from a combination of materials including iron, leather and silk, which were carefully layered and laced together to create a highly effective, protective garment. The helmet, or kabuto, was a particularly important component of the samurai's armor, often featuring elaborate crests and decorations that signified the wearer's rank and family lineage. One striking aspect of samurai armor was its aesthetic appeal. Each piece of armor was carefully crafted and often adorned with intricate designs, reflecting the wearer's personal taste and status. This attention to detail extended even to the smallest components, such as the fittings on the sword scabbard, which were often made from precious metals and featured intricate carvings and inlays. Ancient Japan was home to a wealth of engineering and architectural innovations, which have left a lasting impact on the nation's landscape and cultural identity. These advances not only demonstrated the ingenuity and resourcefulness of the Japanese people, but also played a crucial role in shaping the nation's political, economic and social development. One of the most iconic architectural achievements of ancient Japan was the construction of castles, which served as the fortified residences of powerful samurai lords. Japanese castle design was heavily influenced by the needs of the samurai class, with a focus on defensive capabilities and adaptability to the nation's varied terrain. Japanese castles were typically built on strategic hilltops, surrounded by a series of concentric walls and moats to provide multiple layers of defense. The central keep, or tenshu, was the heart of the castle, housing the lord's living quarters and serving as a symbol of his authority. Castles were designed to make use of the natural landscape for defense, incorporating elements such as cliffs, rivers and ravines to create a formidable fortress. One unique feature of Japanese castle design was the use of stone foundations, which supported the wooden structures above. These foundations, known as Ishiotoshi, were carefully constructed using large, irregularly shaped stones, which were expertly fitted together without the use of mortar. This technique allowed the foundations to flex and shift during earthquakes, providing greater stability and resilience to these wooden structures. Ancient Japan was also home to a number of impressive religious structures, such as the Todaiji Temple in Nara. This temple, 
which houses the world's largest bronze statue of the Buddha, was constructed in the 8th century using a unique method of interlocking wooden beams known as Kanawatsugi. This technique allowed the massive structure to be built without the use of nails, creating a flexible and earthquake-resistant framework that has stood the test of time. Japanese gardens were another area where engineering and architectural ingenuity were on display. These carefully designed spaces were intended to evoke a sense of tranquility and harmony with nature, often incorporating elements such as ponds, bridges and carefully placed rocks to create a balanced and visually appealing landscape. The use of shakki, or borrowed scenery, was a key concept in Japanese garden design as it allowed the garden to incorporate distant natural features, such as mountains or trees, into the overall composition. The ancient Japanese were also skilled in the construction of wooden bridges, which were essential for traversing the nation's many rivers and streams. One notable example is the Kintai Bridge, which was built in the 17th century and features a series of five wooden arches. This unique design allowed the bridge to withstand floods and other natural disasters, while also providing an aesthetically pleasing focal point for the surrounding landscape. One interesting aspect of ancient Japan was the development of its writing system. The Japanese language initially had no written form, but with the introduction of Chinese characters known as kanji in the 4th century, Japan began to develop a unique writing system. Over time, two phonetic scripts, hiragana and katakana, emerged, allowing for greater flexibility and expression in written Japanese. This combination of kanji, hiragana and katakana formed the basis of the Japanese writing system, which is still in use today. The No theater is another fascinating aspect of ancient Japanese culture. No is a form of classical Japanese drama that combines music, dance and drama in a highly stylized and ritualized manner. Originating in the 14th century, No plays often feature supernatural themes and explore the boundaries between the mortal and spiritual realms. The performances are characterized by their slow, deliberate movements and the use of intricately carved wooden masks, which serve to enhance the actor's expressions and convey deep emotions. In the realm of cuisine, ancient Japan developed a unique culinary tradition that emphasized simplicity, seasonality, and an appreciation for natural flavors. The foundation of Japanese cuisine is based on the principle of Ichiju Sansai, which translates to one soup, three dishes. This concept revolves around the idea of a balanced meal, consisting of a soup, a main dish, usually fish or meat, and two side dishes accompanied by rice and pickles. This principle is still at the heart of Japanese cuisine today, emphasizing harmony and balance in both flavor and presentation. I hope you enjoyed our video today. Stay tuned for more exciting developments and as always, thanks for watching.